Most of my life, I usually tried to stay out of things, away from things. I didn't even bother with politics, except when it came to the LGBT plus community. I just didn't want to get involved in anything else. For years, I didn't know where I stood. I didn't know if I could be brave enough. I didn't know anything like that. So I just did what I could, which wasn't really much, but I did advocate for many years. And then 2001 happened and 9-11 happened and things started to change. Like there was no, I don't know where things were going, but that's when things started to radicalize. And I mean, change drastically on the conservative end. And even though the bigotry, racism, hostility was always there, it was becoming so blatant. And it was scary. It started to get really scary. And I saw that this country was changing. And I remember when uh, W and Kerry were running. And yes, I voted for Kerry and watched all of it happen. And next thing you know, Kerry had to concede because, you know, he was getting more, uh, Bush w, w. Bush was getting more votes, all of this stuff. And there was this whole, like, you know, what about the tickers or whatever they called them, the, the ticks or whatever, and the whole uh, jab, uh, jab thing in Florida. Everything went crazy. And things started to get weirder. And then 2008 happened. And when 2008 happened and Obama got elected, it was the most beautiful, amazing, I can't even tell you how much unity there was. There was a lot of separation too, because you got the people who were pissed that someone who was black and named Obama, okay, was voted in. He was our first black president. And while people, mostly conservatives, didn't like him, he tried really hard and was still a two-term president. And it was a great eight years when it came to liberation and when it came to feeling accepted and free and marriage equality happened, it was beautiful. It was a beautiful year for the LGBT plus community. It really was. It was a beautiful eight years. And then 2016 happened and Things got real. I mean, crazy real. The divide. I always knew that America was not as cool and nice as people often say. I mean, I'm not saying that there is no freedom, that it's not better than other places where people are, you know, really suffering like Palestine, you know, where the genocide is happening. But I knew that America was chock full of racism and bigotry. And 2016 was a learning experience because I got to see it. I got to see it in my own hometown, like my own hometown, like Jackson Heights. I got to see it in my, in my in-laws. I, I saw it in my ex. I saw it in some of his friends. I, I saw it in myself. That was one of the hardest conversations to have being called out and realizing my privilege, my colorism and my, I'm Puerto Rican, but I have colorism privilege. And I learned a lot about that. And that was a hard conversation. And 2016 was a lot of learning for me, a lot of learning for me about myself, about my privilege, about the things I was taught and the other things. And um, as I learned more about myself and my own inner bigotry and how I had to really call it out, I also learned other things that I was never taught in elementary school, like the fact that this country was built on colonization, on genocide, on slavery on things that they don't want children to learn about in school because they're scared that children will ask questions. 
because they're scared that they're scared that children will have this thing called white guilt. When in reality, it's not about that. It's about the parents' guilt and the fact that they don't want to face it. Not their children. Their children want to learn. So as the years passed and the 2020s came, I realized something about 2016. And then I realized even more so in 2020 and in 2021. 2020 was different because 2020 was the year of a lot of changes and a lot of unnecessary deaths because of false propaganda from people who did not want to believe that we were in a pandemic. 2020 was also the year of my villain arc. I am not going to be one of those people who will not call out the racism, the bigotry, the transphobia, the homophobia, the misogyny, the inner misogyny, the patriarchy. I'm not going to keep quiet anymore. And that's when I stopped. That's what I stopped being. That's when I stopped being quiet. Got me into a lot of trouble. <laughs> Um, got me banned a lot, <laughs> but, um, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. 